right so uh, what I wanted to do today is uh, try to play with uh, jump tutorials like we did the two last times so which is a bunch of tutorials for uh, the jump modeling language for mathematical optimization embedded in Julia and these uh, in these in these tutorials uh, what I wanted to add is uh, an example on the max cut problem which is a problem from graphs uh, which is fairly simple to state and the interesting thing is you can formulate a solution approach for this problem uh, using mixed integer linear optimization uh, which is okay but fairly weak and fairly inefficient and another approach is using uh, semi-definite optimization so uh, linear optimization uh, over matrices and the additional constraint is that these matrices have to be semi-definite positive. Um, okay, so far so good. Uh, so, uh, let's get started. Oops, I didn't finish, or did I finish the last time? Yeah, I'm gonna reset this here. Um, docs manifest. Uh, so jump 021, so this branch here was the one we did last time, so which was basically updating all the tutorials from jump 020 to jump 021. So if I now start the project and check what's going on, uh, I'll be at uh, jump 021, etc. So everything is good. I had also started... Uh, uh, no, not that. Branch. I had also started this uh, indicator tutorial, uh, which we stopped a bit early, because I want to see to investigate exactly what was the bug we we're observing on um, on indicator constraints, and most specifically to on bridged indicator constraints. I'm not sure what was what was happening here. Uh, Alright, so what we'll do from there is, so we'll continue from this branch, which is so uh, jump 021 to git branch, and let's add a uh, max cut. And this one will be less uh, maintenance and less plumbing and more going into the, um, the models, so going into the, the heart of these tutorials, so we'll by creating a new one. Check out max cut. Uh, so I did a bit of reading before starting this tutorial because I'm not an expert in um, in max cut or even in combinatorial optimization problems on graph. I know them, but I'm not re doing research or anything on them. Um, so I had to get a bit re-familiar with this, and more specifically, I'm really not an expert on semi-definite or let's say structured convex optimization in general. So I had to recheck some few things. Um, yep, so we're there. Is the screen big enough? Um, it seems okay. On, do we need one more? Do we need to resume a bit? Uh, oops, no, no, no. How is it looking? No, it's big enough. Right, so like that. Okay, thank you. Right. So max cut. Um, maybe before before starting, um, I, I'll explain a few things on the max cut problem, and um, interrupt me or ask questions if you if you want. So I get I guess I get a graph around here. Do I have? Uh, let's check if uh, Wikipedia has some some nice graph graph theory. Yes. Um. So imagine you have a graph like this, um, but with weights on the edges. Do we see that well? It's not really great. Yeah, like that. So imagine we have a graph like this with weights on the edges, and what we want is um, to find a max cut uh, on on this graph, which means we want to separate the the graph, the vertices of the graph, sorry, in two sets. Um, such that the edges that cross from one set to the other will be maximized. So without weights, we could say it's the it will be a uni uh, let's say um, 
unweight yeah sorry an unweighted uh, max cut problem so here we have a click of three so the max we can achieve is two let's say we separate these two here so one is separated from f uh, five and two so this means these two are together over that uh, so this means we could cut it like this I think this would be a maximum so this means uh, the max cut here will be on one side six five and two and on the other side one three and four I think this is correct uh, interrupt me if it's not the case uh, we said six five two so that's uh, one two three four five that's five edges uh, crossing the crossing the cut five over one two three four five six seven so I don't think we could do much more five sounds like like a good solution I think this is optimal uh, so this is a combinatorial optimization problem in the sense that we decide uh, the a solution is a s is a subset of some binary set uh, yeah, of binary set exponent something so um, the the values are always zero one it's a discrete set right and so yeah what's interesting is that usually for well for many uh, combinatorial optimization problems you have a formulation which is based on uh, semi-definite optimization uh, sorry on linear op uh, linear integer optimization so you have a linear relaxation uh, you have a yeah you have a linear relaxation you on which you branch when you get a fractional solution and you branch until you get some solution which is in uh, which is integer it's basically that roughly speaking and badly explained um, what's the background that you had on the start the background that I ha I'm not sure what you mean the background that I had on the start uh, the background like my Firefox window um, so yeah getting back to this so what's interesting here is that oh the lake oh yeah it's one of the pictures uh, so do I get it here? So the background image is not mine. It's from, uh, it's from Ubuntu. I'm on Ubuntu 18.04 the LTS, and that's one of the stock pictures they have. So, yeah. Uh, so going back to this, the um, the interesting thing here is you the the most efficient solution is not to go from combinatorial problem to linear formulation to integer formulation the most efficient is to go from uh, combinatorial problem to quadratic formulation to semi-definite optimization and solving this and then theoretically either branching on the semi-definite uh, optimization or uh, finding some some approximation scheme um, yeah, so what's interesting is you go from combinatorial to nonlinear and then you switch back to to a solution instead of going from combinatorial to linear. So that's a, a nice thing here. Uh, I might say some stupid things and a funny uh, funny component on that is I saw a seminar by my research supervisor this week on uh, well the graph and eigenvalues, so including uh, this problem. So he if he watches this, he will see me saying probably many error, uh, erroneous things, so that, that, that will be interesting next week. Right, so, um, how do you, or how do we formulate this problem? So, uh, let's just write uh, max cut. Oops. So let's just formulate this problem a bit naively. We said we have a graph with um, vertices, vertices and edges, okay. And what we also have is uh, weights. So, uh, so the edges will be i, j in edges in edge. 
in E, so IJ will be uh, vertices that are in the S and a pair or a tuple of um, vertices are in the edge. Okay. Uh, and the weights will be a uh, weight matrix IJ, uh, which is sparse and for uh, because this is for I and J in uh, the edges. So you only have a weight defined if you yeah you only have a weight defined if uh, the IJ is in the edges. Okay. Um, how are we gonna call the solution? Uh, we could call it. Uh, let's call it x. So for a linear, so we'll go for a linear based um, formulation first, which is what I'm mostly familiar with um, and what lots of people are m uh, more familiar with. So uh, for a linear based formulation, I'm gonna also check my notes because this is uh, far from trivial uh, so what we want is um, define the variable xi for each i in the vertices of a graph equal uh, 1 if uh, so what we want in the end is a set s and the complement of a set s bar so that's the, the output of an optimization or of a decision on uh, on the max cut because we want to separate. Uh, where is my super graph? Oh, I closed it already. Um, yeah, too bad I closed it. Yep. Oh, perfect. Yes, that. Here. So what I want is a subset of my um, of my vertices means I'm gonna my, my decision is gonna be a set S which is which one I put in the let's say the first set and the complement is automatically deduced so here S will be for example 2 5 6 and S bar will be 1 3 4 okay um, so XI equal 1 if uh, XI if I in S uh, 0 of otherwise it's just a convention, you could completely flip this around and use 0 and 1, so 0 for s and 1 for s bar. Um, and what we want is uh, maximize the sum of the weights of the edges that cross from s to s bar. And since we're considering a non-directed graph, this is exactly the same as crossing from s bar to s. It's exactly the same edges. Okay. So. Um this means uh, let's define variables let's say z uh, ij equal uh, 1 if um, if xi uh, oops if xi different from xj okay um, so this is not a this is not a linear formulation but this is a first naive one so x, uh, zij will be defined over the edges for i j e and for this uh, zij can be one only if xi different from xj and it will even be if and only if okay so uh, and the objective finally would be maximizing uh, the sum of z i j times uh, w i j uh, I hope everyone is following fine. So this is basically the outline of the problem. So maximizing the sum of zij times uh, wij, and zij is one if xi is different from xj. So it means i is in s, for example, and then j is in s bar, or the other way around. 
and if that's the case then we get one here and we add this weight to uh, the to the the weight uh, to be the weight considered so the one crossing the boundary of uh, s s bar okay so we have the whole objective and problem here formulated let's say naively and uh, now we want a uh, first linear formulation for that yeah um it's a naive problem statement and this would be here a uh, linear formulation so a linear formulation for this problem will be um so yeah mixed integer or integer linear formulation because we have only linear constraints but we also have integrality or binary constraints so uh, what we want is uh, that sums up pretty well what we want here so maximize over the, ver the decision variables which are x and z of sum of zij wij uh, subject to so subject to constraint yeah, let's try it subject to and here we have our constraints so we said uh, zij can only be one if um, i is in the set and j is not or the other way around so uh, the first thing will be uh, so z and x the second type of variable, so it would be let's say zij in uh, zero one for uh, for i j in e, and then xi in zero one for i in v. Okay. Uh, so that's the decision variables. Oops, we let this at the end, and then the the, the substance, the, the core of the constraints themselves, will be so z i j smaller or equal to. So if x i and x j are both uh, one, it means i and j are both in s and then z i j has to be zero and if uh, z i j uh, if x i j and z i j are both uh, zero it's the same thing so it means z i j will be smaller than x i plus x j that's the easy one here this is saying so this one is between zero and one uh, this is between zero and one and this is between zero and one so we have these two to zero then this has to be zero and this 2 to 0 corresponds to um, both i and j being in s bar so now the other way around z i j is smaller than so the complement of this which is 2 minus this and that so if we have um, yeah did I do a mistake no, it's fine. Um, so if we have uh, xi and xj both equal 0, then this is zij small or equal to 2. This is always respected. If we have one of the two being 1 and the other 0, then this is equal to 1. This is always respected also. And if t the two are equal to 1, then i and j are both in s. And then this is equal to 0. And then zij has to be 0. So these two constraints enforce the um, enforce that um, z i j will only be one if the two are different, and that's it. That's our uh, linear problem. So before going to the um, uh, to the let's say uh, nonlinear quadratic equivalent, which is very hairy. Uh, I guess we can start with uh, writing the tutorial itself, so the document. All right. Oops. Uh, not in this RC. So, for those who were not there before, uh, let's check what's there. No. Uh, okay. We have 
different uh, documents in jump tutorials in the repo here. We have a uh, documentation source which doesn't contain much, scripts which is where we put the tutorials, so the source for the tutorials are in script, and then notebook is the pro uh, produced result when you generate notebooks out of these scripts. Okay. So what I do is I copy one of the tutorials. So it would be I think in modeling and should be something close to network flows modeling and we'll call it a uh, max cut okay okay so the title will be here um, uh, maximum cut problem linear and uh, semi-definite optimization formulations okay here we'll have uh, oops okay uh, do we want to start with everything here no I I think not so we'll use, yeah, I guess GLPK is fine for the linear one. Uh, we'll definitely need linear algebra and we'll also need light graphs, which is the, let's say, the one of the reference graph packages in Julia, or the reference these days graph packages in Julia. Um, so light graph is really uh, fairly easy to use, I'd say, and to get started with. It's battery included and so on. But it also allows you to um, define your own graph type and define your own functions fairly easily so it's it's fairly neat and I'm not saying that because I'm helping maintaining some of the things in there totally not a conflict of interest oh and yeah you're right in the chat everybody needs uh, linear algebra all the time basically um, okay so uh, the D and maximum cut problem. Problem. Suppose that each arc. Ah, do we want to? No way. Last time I got bogged down by writing the prose, which is fairly long, uh, much longer for me than writing the code. So I'll just skip that for now. Uh, so let's maybe add to do explain problem. Okay, um, and then we'll start with linear integer formulation. Or integer linear formulation. I think people mostly capitalize this. Okay. So uh, we'll assume that we'll have introduced all the notation before. So here, uh, so it would be a max problem, a maximization problem over x and z, as we said before. Some, you, uh, y is, okay now. Uh, so for all i j in e, w i j and uh, Z I J. Okay. Uh, I think we could use sub equation here. I'm not sure this will work, so I'm not going to put it for now. So maximizing over X and Z this objective, subject to, and then um, so first constraint is. Uh, yeah, I'll just reuse the one from my uh, from my small file, which was max cut. I think this is almost valid LaTeX. Yeah, that. So, um, subject to Z, this needs curly brackets smaller than this, uh, the smaller can be made a bit prettier like that, xi, xj, okay, uh, 
Um, second one will be where is my end? Uh, second one was this one. I try to align things maybe here. Um, so they're just smaller than two minus x i plus x j. Okay, and then uh, the binary constraints. Oh, I just copy that. Z i j in zero one. and xi in zero one fall i in v cool uh, we need to close that and that's it uh, oh yeah we need to also close the latex block here. This should work. Uh, one thing we should we could do is plot the graph to represent um, yes so graph plot. So we'll also try to plot the graph because it's uh, it's very nice in the tutorial to see an illustration of what you mean exactly. Uh, one thing we could do is uh, Given a graph and a uh, given a graph weights and a decision, um, I think we could. Yeah, given a graph weights and a decision, we should make a function that just gives you um, the the objective value, and that can be done without jump, without anything, just computing the objective value. Uh, like we said, uh, do, oh, I closed it. Uh, sorry, I closed the the picture again. I'm gonna try to keep it now. Is this no? Um, yes, this one. Yes, that. So imagine that you're given this graph again and somebody gives you s so the let's say the left hand side set is 6 2 and 5 then what you can do is for all edges so uh, yeah iterate over all edges and check is this edge on the boundary so one side in s the other side in s bar and if that's the case add the weight of this edge to uh, your total score and then you output this total score. So this would be a, a good one, I think. And this is also fairly easy because it's starting everything with light graph, no optimization, no linear programming involved, and, and so on. All right. So I just yeah, reduce it here. Uh, so if you have any question, don't hesitate in the meantime. And yeah, we also need a cool graph. Uh, what would this look like? Uh, so this is not even using the graph. So function compute uh, cut value, and then this will take a graph. It would be a light graph. That abstract graph. Oops. Mm. Why are there single quotes following the pound sign in the comments? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, I just finished my function signature before I forget it, and then I answer this one. So G, uh, this will also take weights. I just call it W, because we, we have a mathematical notation just above, uh, which would be an abstract matrix, for example. Matrix. And this will also take... Um, how do how do we how are we going to model a solution? A solution would be um, left side subset 
which will be a con uh, left subset or just subset uh, vertex subset okay and this vertex subset would be um, the um, the ones that belong in let's say the left hand side so in our example here I would say my left hand side arbitrarily is two five six and I want to compute um, the max cu the cut value of this equivalently you should just you, you should get the same solution by um, giving one for free because this should be symmetric so this would be a good test to add uh, to answer the question why are there single quotes following the pound sign in the comments that's a very good question because I didn't introduce it so uh, this project uh, junk tutorials is using um, is using weave uh, I hope that's the correct pronunciation weave yeah weaving something yeah uh, is using Weave, which is uh, a, pack a Julia package which allows you to produce documents out of Julia code. And uh, more specifically, with this, with this here, you can produce. Uh, so I don't need it here because it's just a simple comment. Otherwise, with that, uh, you can produce a specifically formatted code, which uh, or specifically formatted comments, which will just be standard Julia comments if you run the script. But uh, if you pass it to Weave, it will know that it needs to be text that's output, that's that's given as output. So if I have this here, um, and I uh, produce a notebook out of it, so this would be a text block in my notebook, this would be a normal LaTeX block in my notebook, and this would be a code block here. Uh, that That's very neat, it's very practical, and that's how these notebooks are done. Uh, if we check jump tutorials, if we check the jump tutorials here, yeah, you have them. Um, so the result will be something like this. Yes. So this will be uh, the resulting notebook, and if I show you the code, it's something like that. So the corresponding code will be script uh, introduction an introduction to Julia. Here you see title contributed some blocks with some uh, specific paragraphs and so on. And the result is this this notebook here. So yeah, fairly practical. Okay, so that's why uh, long story short for the pound and then the single quote. Okay, so, so far so good. Uh, let's get back to our uh, function here. So we create a function which takes a graph, a uh, weight matrix and a vertex subset. And we want to output uh, the, um, so the, the results will be uh, could we sum yes we'll do a, a single sum maybe sum so of w i j or i in uh, vertices so vertices is a function from light graph uh, so vertices of g J in vertices of G. Um, so by default, uh, whenever there is not uh, an edge from I to J, then the weight should be zero. So that's the case, for example, from W of I I. It will always be zero. So for I in vertices G uh, of G J in vertices of G, um, if I in uh, vertex subset and J um, it will maybe write it with uh, with parentheses here I vertex subset and not in J 
vertex subset. Okay. And we just returned the result, so I might not even uh, give it a name. I return that. Okay. Uh, so one thing I could do is uh, use my my toy graph because I I start to like it this Wikipedia graph. So we just uh, create it first. I'm trying to look for the best way to create it. It might be to manually enter all the all the edges. So I'll do that. Um, that's okay. So I create my first toy graph. Uh, G equal. Uh, so it will be a simple graph with six vertices. And then I will add the edges one by one. Uh, so. so add edge of G. So one, two. 1, 5, 2, 3. There might be a better solution to do it, but because there are some special structures in this graph, so maybe we could just create a cycle or create a complete graph of 3 and then add these. But I think it's way more efficient to have all the, all the vertices from the beginning bec and then add edges for uh, lots of graph types. Maybe not simple graph, might be something saying something stupid, but I think overall it's better. So 2, 3, uh, 3, 4, 3, 4, 4, 5, and 4, 6. Um, yes, I'll just copy this and go to here. Oops, no, I definitely need using light graph. And that's the only thing I'm gonna need, I think. Uh, using a graph plot also, if we want to look at the graph. Okay, let's create this graph. True means here the edge has been added, so it means there was no problem. If I add an edge for 7, and we don't have 7 vertices, this would be false. Edge 2, 5, yes, we have an... Did I? Oh yeah, I definitely forgot it. Thank you very much. I uh, will add it here. Yes, so let's just relaunch everything. Oh no, I could just relaunch this, and they will all be false, except the 2, 5 that I forgot before. False, 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 except this one. Perfect. Uh, then, so we have a graph plot. So I'll just use graph plot dot. It's gplot HTML to get it directly in my browser of G. And that's it. I don't need to add anything. Yes, perfect. And I'll do the same thing with uh, node label equal 1, 2, uh, 6. And does it look like my uh, Wikipedia graph? 6, 4, 5, 3, 5 is in the cycle with 1 and 2. Perfect, yeah, that's it. Okay. So this here is a, um, so it produces an SVG, so which is fairly practical because you have the whole thing vectorized, you can save it as text. So yeah, Graphplot needs a bit of maintenance if somebody wants to, uh, um, if somebody wants to commit a bit to it. But yeah, overall Graphplot is really a neat piece of software and going fairly fast. You've seen, I haven't waited for anything. It's going, it's going pretty well. Loading Graphplot is light and uh, creating my graph in my browser was quite a snap too. Yeah, time to first plot is really an issue for a normal plots, like when you have very dense things, but here we're just producing an SVG, which is very light, so that's why it's, it's going fast. Okay, so we have our graph, and for now we'll say, um, I also use sparse matrices, Sparse arrays. 
So I use sparse arrays because uh, I will want to um, create my uh, weight matrix, which will be a sparse zeros of size uh, six and six. So I'm creating a sparse matrix of only zeros for now, um, and for i j in edges of the graph, I will add uh, so w i j will be one. I'll just have uh, unit weights for now. Did I close no? I oops, I forgot to using sparse arrays. Yeah, uh, so I know it wasn't a great a criticism of graph plot. So yeah, that's why graph plot is restrict a bit restrictive compared to other plotting packages in terms of what you can do. There's a bit less things, but overall it works well because it's fairly light. You see, just adding it to a package, loading it, and so on is is really light. Yeah. So that's uh, a nice thing. Iterate simple. Wait, uh, can I not? Huh? How come? Ah, we haven't. Um, ah, yeah. E equal, and then I J. We so we need to convert it specifically to a tuple, I think. Yes. One, two. Okay, all good. Yeah, it all seems fine here. So we have. Uh, the weights that are set and now so what I want to do is test that my intuition is correct so that means if I take what was the subset that I chose again yeah uh, 256 or equivalently 134 let's take 256 uh, if I use this with uh, 256 as subset this should be um, equal to uh, the number of edges that are crossing. So one here, two, three, four, five. So G, W, and then this would be my subset, and I would just use a tuple, I guess. It's the lightest thing for small values like that. Uh, oops, sorry. Two, five, six. Yes, and since we don't have a type, a way in the type to express something that's iterable, it will be too restrictive to say that my subset here has to be a vector, for example, or an abstract set. Because the operation I'm doing on it is just checking uh, if a member is in there or not. And I don't want, so for a very s small cardinalities, it would no not be worth it to create a set. For larger cardinalities, you might want, um, you might want a vector but in between a tuple should be fine so I don't want people to get imposed a uh, type on that it's just you know that this has to be a collection on which you can check if an integer belongs or not another thing that we could use here is a bit set which will be fairly appropriate for that I think and so compute value of this um, this should be equal to uh, how it 5 I said yes and that should be a prox 5 not 5 okay yeah I still don't have Unicode on, on micro this makes me sad but yeah for now oh and if we start to do test we will also need using test tests or test I never know Just test singular. Okay. Um, one thing I might want to do is distinguish my other packages from the linear, from the standard library packages. So I'll just do this like that. Okay. Okay. So um, this is all good. Let's run the test now. Test fail, obviously. 1.0. So I did something that was wrong, it seems. 
sum of wij for i vertices j vertices if hmm so this means um, so I'll just dig into the function and see what's happening. Yeah, period of life reading. I mean, given that I'm expecting to go a bit deeper on the semi-definite optimization side, I'm really fine with having a small bug on a loop and a sum. This will definitely not be the worst because it's just some bug to find out, while some of it could be um, could be way worse. So some of it might be like. I have no idea why this is not working or not converging or anything. I mean, I'm really not a semi-definite wizard. So subset uh, vertex subset equal this. And then if I do this, 1.0, this is not supposed to happen. Uh, so let's just turn this into a for loop now. So for i inverses. No. Ah. Why doesn't is it? Can I blame um, no, here? Ah, uh, I'm not sure we, who is to blame here. Is it the oh my ripple or is it just Julia that doesn't let me enter a new line after that? For J in vertices. I think I could even loop on the neighbors of i instead of looping on the vertices themselves. I, it sounds a bit smarter because I know that if I don't have a neighborhood between i and j, then the weight has to be zero. Um, info. Yeah, let's do some uh, info debugging. I so. So I just info i and j, and then and then I show and I show that. So at show, unlike info, will not evaluate the expression. It will well. It will first show me the expression and then show me the evaluation of this expression. So it's fairly convenient for debugging. Okay. So... Yeah, yeah so you're right. For i in vertices, j in vertices also works. It's just I wanted to decompose a bit more, but this is really not necessary. Oh right, I have taken only uh no my my loop is completely incorrect here. I don't want i in vertex and j not in. I want that or the other way around and I did not do that here. So what I want is in of i in ver uh, vertex subset is just different from j and vertex subset here because I want one to be true and the other false or the other way around. I just want, I don't want, it's like a XOR logical uh, implication. I, I just don't want the two having the same value. I think that's a valid XOR, yeah. Five, okay, perfect, that's better. Uh, so I can now go back and fix this one here. Let's copy that. And yep. So if I now rerun the whole thing, I should get. Oh no, I did not correct um, for ij in. Yes, that. No. Um, ij. No, no, for e. Yes, I need this one instead. Here, so there, yep. All good. 
So if I now rerun the whole thing, didn't select the good one. Uh, oh, where am I? I here. Mm. So I'm just going to retake the whole thing. And up to the test, which says that this has to be equal to 5. Test passed. Wonderful. We're almost done there. Just kidding. Uh, one thing I wanted to do now that my test is correct is uh, improve this here. Because for i in vertices, then j can just be in the neighbors of j i. Because we don't need to check all the vertices over time. This would be fairly more efficient. So I just redefine the function. And then my test. Huh. Error in the test. Interesting. So I don't have access to to i in this. So I think I need a second for loop. Yes, okay. So interestingly, so for so someone said in the chat, I'm literally gonna take the comments and paste it. Um, someone said in the chat for i inverses, j inverses, this works, but the two parts of a loop have to be independent because they, they are looped on at the same time. So if you have this that depends on i, this will not work. Here for that you need a second for loop. I wouldn't have done myself. Okay. Uh, so we're good here. So we just test the value uh, to evaluate to evaluate it. We'll add a bit of text around to say this is a toy example, blah blah blah. Maybe we'll add the source, say that it's taken from Wikipedia. Uh, leave the credits to yes here. So, uh, graph taken from uh, yeah, curious. Uh, I don't know why. For I so, someone in the chat mentions this works, right? Yes, it does. Um, but. Yeah, what if you print it in J? One one. Okay, yes. So this works, but I don't know why. J in neighbors of J I. J. How come this works and it didn't work in the in the sum? It's okay. Huh. Okay, so apparently there are some corner cases on this. Thanks, thanks, run string in the chat for the explanation. I had no idea. I still don't. Uh, it's, it'd be interesting to see what are the corner cases that don't work for this. Okay, so we have a toy example working. Now, uh, what we want to do is create the optimization model uh, for this problem. So we add uh, n equal the number of vertices of a graph and m equal the number of edges of a graph. Okay. Mm. I don't I'm not even sure we need the number of edges. Uh, what we'll add is so this will be a linear max cut is a model with JPK optimizer as optimizer. We'll keep this as the, as that. The first variable so this would be that 
first variable would be we said uh, z with i are we indexing over the edges or over we'll index that over the um, uh, yeah we will index this over the ends so we'll make a full matrix out of it oh, okay thank you so the coma doesn't work in comprehensions okay I didn't know you have a wor the most ignorant uh, streamer you've ever had in this weekend at least so we have a first variable Z and then we have a second variable which will be X both will be binaries and then we'll add the constraint that we said that we talked about before which will be um, constraint for so this will be for this will be so first thing in to give in the constraint is the model oops then the second thing to give is the indices of a constraint and in that case if I go back here the first constraint is over i and j in edges And such that I J in edges of G. We can do that because edges of G returns an iter a custom iterators and not an array, so it's not very costly to check that I and J is indeed uh, an arc or yeah, an arc from the edges. So that's the indices, and then. So zij has to be smaller than, so that was the first constraint, uh, xi plus xj. So this is to say if both xi and xj are zero, then um, we don't take this edge. And then the second one will be i in uh, one n, j in one n, ij in edges zij will be smaller than uh, 2 yeah, 2 minus this 2 minus uh, the sum of xi and xj ok uh, we already set the binary constraints so we just need the objective now uh, this would be a maximization problem and this would be the dot product between can we do dot products on matrices? that's a good question between uh, W and Z so this will be the first model let's say oops I didn't so I'm using jump I'm using linear algebra using GLPK which is an open source uh, solver for linear uh, and mixed integer linear optimization so now I do have all the things I need I can just copy my model so the nice thing with jump it is it will print all the variables it will print also the constraints in a mathematical like form so my constraint for free is the this one and so on. Uh, it does look like a lot of constraint. How do I have these many edges? Oh yes, I do. So the constraints are only there's one line in the constraint for each uh, of the edges and not for each pair i j because we filtered it after this semicolon here. Okay, yeah, no, um, so in that case, the dot product is uh, what I want. Because I just want the element wise product and the sum of that. And yeah, it's exactly what I wanted here. My wa well, my weights are all one, so it's not changing much. Uh, so if now I optimize this, we will finally see if my. Um, model w if my solution the, the graphical solution I picked from looking at the graph was the optimal one 
So that's uh, linear max cut. And this is not a big graph, so it should not take too long. Even though, so the, as we said, the linear model for this problem is very inefficient. Uh, so jump that value. Said. Nope. Broadcasted. Okay, so how do I read this? Uh, I will just do. I get a vector for the solutions. I think so I J for I in one N J in um, minus one J in I plus one N if value of ij is uh, smaller than 0 0.5 we know for i ah, again yes again yet yeah, no uh, no coma in comprehensions got beaten once and twice so one to uh, one five so which one did it take if we get back to our graph. Okay, one five. So this is here completely symmetric. Um no no sorry, I'm not I'm saying garbage. So one five, I guess we uh, we we just have one five. Okay. So one five. So this means one is in a subset and five in the other. Two three, two five Okay, so one and two are in one same. Okay, I think we have one, two, and six. Yes. So we have six is disconnected from four, so it's alone. Four is disconnected from six, five. From six, five, so it's with three, I guess. Oh no, wait. Four is alone? What's the solution then? I think I didn't have the, the optimal value. Objective value. Oops, of uh, linear Mexicans. Six, okay, yeah, I didn't have, yeah, you're right. So I didn't have, um, I didn't get the proper objective value. I missed uh, the, the optimum. Uh, when I did my naive uh, computation. So the optimum value is 6 with 1. So 1, 2 are together. And then 6, I guess. Uh, 1, 5. No, because 4 is not with 5 and 1 is not with 5. So 1, 2 and 4 are together. And with this you get 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, yes, okay. So it means um, no. So the solution is one, two, four, and uh, five, three, six. One, three, six. I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Um, okay, we can leave this on the side. Cool. So I guess we can also add a text here. Again, fairly stupidly just copying my approx. Um, Yes, optimize. Don't forget to optimize before. And then uh, jump. Not objective. So that would be another test. So we don't test the solution here because, um, again, 
watch out that uh, the solution is completely symmetric, meaning if you have one subset S and one subset S bar, you can flip them and you get the, uh, the same objective value, but the um, variables are not the same. Yeah, one thing we can also check here is jump that value of uh, x. Yeah. One, two, four. So it's one, two, and four together, right? So yeah, long story short, I got bitten by the test in another tutorial uh, last stream because um, one solution was perfectly equivalent to another in terms of objective and so the different solutions could get picked by your solver. All solvers don't work the same, they don't take the same decisions on branching or pivoting for simplex and you can end up with something different. Show value of x, uh, I guess in show value of we just show the same comprehension that we did above. Just show that. Show value of Z. Show value of... No. Show that. Yes. Okay. And yeah, show the objective value we put at here. Yeah, we don't need jump there. That's right. Okay. I think we're good for the linear part, I guess. I'll just take a two minute break. Mm. Oh wow, this herbal tea doesn't cool well. Right, so, um, so if you have questions, don't hesitate on this part. This linear model should be fairly straightforward for the moment. Uh, I just remove the rest of all of this, which we won't need. And then one thing I want to do first is generate the, the notebook and the test out of this, okay? Um, yes. Alright, so we have a new script, and what we'll do is, uh, so I use Julia 1.0. This is important because the notebooks, the notebooks depend on it, and the tutorials are using Julia 1.0, which is the LTS, the long-term supported version. The long-term support, yes. Okay. So now this is done. Um, what I do is import jump tutorials. Right, so we have a bunch of warnings here, but uh, this is quote, quote, not my problem. Well, not our problem here. Uh, it would be nice to fix it, but I, I'm not sure what's happening, so... I don't think this... Uh, I check the source code from Weave and they seem to know what's what's going on, so I'll trust them on that. Uh, so we have jump tutorials, and what we can do is use one of the functions, which is jump tutorials uh, weave. And we'll weave just um, one file. 
and this is not in optimization concepts but in what's the name again um, uh, modeling modeling and we called it uh, maxcut I think Max maxcut.jl script modeling yeah max cuts okay so usually I think uh, yeah if it's as usual I think I'm gonna get an error it's fine I'll accept that so what this uh, WIF file does is creating first a test file which is the same file but with all the comments removed all the um, all the hashtag and quote single quote uh, comments removed and then it also creates a notebook and it evaluates this notebook so that you can get a notebook that's already ready to print uh, well that's already printing all your outputs for let's say teaching or for just showing on the web and so on it's very practical I don't think I have any error which is great what I can do now is uh, open my notebook lab uh, just change the window for this and I'd open I'm gonna close the others that I have opened and go in notebook modeling and then I have my new notebook my Xcat here so here this is all generated from what we had before ah uh, yeah that's so that that one had not the single quote uh, this one so this means it it you it considered it uh, as a proper code block. Uh, ah, that's a bummer. The LaTeX doesn't seem to have appreciated something. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, fine. So the LaTeX seems fine. Now that I mentioned it, uh, maybe we should not have a double quote here because this seems to misalign some stuff. Is it better? Yeah, it's slightly better. Uh, I modify this as text. Uh, again, uh, if you've watched the other streams, I'm pretty awful with this, but I should not be modifying these files because these are generated. Oh, and now it's worse. I'm completely forgetting what I just did. And, and, and the max line also. Oh, okay. Very good catch. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so this will go. Yep. Thank you. So we now have a proper render. Oh, and I forgot something here, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot twice to add new lines. Uh, that's better. Oh, and the in also need Unicode. Oh, and this will need escaping also. Oh, wow. How did I get accepted into university? So, apart from all these all these things, our model is fine now. So, we have our beautifully printed uh, LaTeX model. Graph taken from this. Okay, it's fine. We don't need the picture. Um, we'll add a stock string here. We have all that. The real question is why people still use LaTeX. I don't know, I, I'm really not fully agreeing with this because uh, I do have a certain love-hate for LaTeX which is more on the love side. Um, I not defined. Okay. Oh, okay. I do have um, this error here. Simple graph not defined. How come simple graph is not defined? It's totally defined. Simple graph. We did load like graph. Uh, what is my recommended alternative to LaTeX? Um, so. I do have a love hate relationship for to with LaTeX, but I definitely recommend it. It's a great, powerful system. 
uh, I saw on Twitter recently that people compare LaTeX to sourdough because people just take some LaTeX document to create other LaTeX documents. They never create LaTeX documents from scratch. Maybe this is the confinement speaking and the mix of writing lots of academic documents with <laughs> baking a lot of sourdough bread, I don't know. But I do find the theory interesting. So we do have light graphs uh, loaded. Light graphs not defined. Are you kidding me? Did this not... Okay, maybe this... It doesn't load everything. Uh, other question in the chat. You are also a fan of Haskell. I'm. I do enjoy Haskell for some things. Uh, I find it very interesting to learn and discover and translate concept in, in concepts into. I don't think I would enjoy using Haskell on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, all right. So now I did load things properly. Uh, this is fine. This is fine. So we should not be erroring anymore. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. It was a joke. I mean, La LaTeX is a love-hate relationship, but people know that we don't have much better. Yeah, we um, we don't have much better, and I'm not sure from a interface perspective you can get much better except capturing the drawings of mathematics and then translating them into uh, like a machine-generated language that you're never supposed to touch. That could be an idea. Okay, so now everything is working properly. So I'm just gonna take this and copy it back onto my script because... Um, so my script did have some errors. So the first thing to fix is this one here. Uh, I have comments, I comment this out, and then single quotes everywhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um. Okay, no, that's unfortunate. No, that's fine. Okay, single quote everywhere, and this is not needed anymore. Wait, that was the wrong one, I hope. Mm. Yes, okay, I, yeah, this one is the correct one, the one we kept. Um. One thing we could do here is graph plot our graph, or g plot our graph. Sorry, uh, how did we do it here? I'm gonna leave the Jupyter Lab at the end. I'm gonna try to avoid having this loaded at two places. Whoops. Uh, graph plot. Graph plot. Yeah, like that. No, I did not have it open. I don't need that anymore. The maximum cut problem. Yada yada. Um, I should have this on the end of a block. is creating creating uh, unary no um, unit weight matrix here and then uh, computing 
value for a solution. And then so we'll do that and then let's show and then um, so this will be building the linear optimization model. Oops. I will remain uh, remove this. Ah, no, I I leave it to do here. Okay. So now we have a linear optimization model working. Uh, one thing I would like to do is test the the performance of this, but this might be a bit too costly to do in a notebook. Because otherwise, what I would like to do is create random graphs and uh, measure the time, the computation time for um, for various sizes of of a graph, whatever size of a graph means, uh, any metric for random graph generation. Um, but this might be a bit costly. Maybe I'll do it on the side. But anyway, the big thing here is we want to compare this with uh, a semi-definite approach, definite formulation. So this here will require quite a bit of uh, explanation, of additional explanation. Um, so let's try to... So this is here a uh, level 3 title, let's say. And this will be a text block max problem. Also, um, can also be formulated as a quadratic optimization. I'll just leave it there and leave it for further explanation. Um, so, the intuition behind this is saying that, and bear with me on this, this is fairly, uh, fairly tricky. So the intuition behind this is, if you have, forget about the vector Z for a moment, which is, or the matrix Z, which is associating 0, 1 to each of the edges. What we want this time is to find uh, edges that are as different, uh, nodes that are as different as possible from each other. So what we want is um, if we set now xi equal 1 Maybe this should be in the in our draft uh, txt here. No, that's uh, SDP for semi-definite problem. If we say that if i is in the set in S, x i equal one. If i in the set minus one otherwise. So now. Uh, this is the intuition behind behind this uh, semi-definite uh, model is that if x i equal one in the set and minus one if not in the set, then uh, if two vectors are the same, they are or the the product is um, the product is one. If they're different, it's minus one. So x time. So x times xj is giving you whether um, is giving you one if your edge between i and j is included and minus one otherwise. So if you do this times um, how is it now one minus this. 
So this is giving you if i and j are identical, so if in the same set, this is giving you zero. If they are in uh, different sets, uh, this means this is giving you minus one. So this is giving you two. Um, and then you count it twice because you count it for i j and for j i. So this means you would have two times. So if you multiply this by uh, w i j. So this would be four times. So over i j and j i, you would have counted uh, four times uh, the weight if they are different. So if i is in s and j is in s bar, or the other way around. So you divide it by four to normalize this. And now this quantity will be w i j if um, so yeah, this overall quantity will be w i j if i and j are in different sets and um, zero otherwise. All right, that's it. So that's a quadratic model. This means um, the quadratic model is maximize uh, the sum of these quantities on line 28 subject to xi equals minus 1 or 1. And you have to choose. Um, so I don't even think this is a continuous model. I think you need uh, the constraint uh, xi in uh, minus one one explicitly so this is still discrete and now this is a mixed integer quadratic model which is even worse it's even harder to solve than uh, mixed integer um, than mixed integer linear problems which are fairly mature solvers so why would we want to take a simple model and make it more make it more complex and harder to solve well, because uh, the relaxation would be different so um, let's say we replace this here by um, so the sum of this is equivalent to so this is uh, a mat so yes Do you could put all these quantities here in the matrix why i j equal x i j times uh, x i times x j. Uh, you could also formulate this as y i j equal no yeah in a matrix form x uh, times no exponent. Yeah, do I want to write it like this? Yes, yes, because we are. It's vectors behaving as matrices here, uh, and no, it's the other way. So it's x times uh, crazy x times uh, x transpose. Okay, I mean the good things. Yes. Uh, so this is two equivalent ways of writing a matrix Y. I hope people can follow at least as good as me. Otherwise, uh, we're all doomed. Um, is everybody all right here? Some does somebody have question? Is somebody lost more than me? Okay, cool. I guess. So um, from here on, we have we can so we can formulate the vector x as uh, this. One constraint is x i times x i is always equal to one. So this means we need x i i equal x i times x i uh, equal uh, yeah one then. That's fine. This is a linear constraint over the diagonal of this matrix. So we're all good. So this means we can reformulate the, the optimization model as 
uh, max uh, the sum over ij of the sum of um, so wij is still the same thing divided by 4 times 1 minus uh, y ij then we also need um, y equals so this is here a constraint and um, we also need x equal x in uh, minus one one I think we still need this constraint with this reformulation here so that's the first reformulation We're maximizing the sum over this which is a linear quantity that's fine uh, this is hard and this is hard oh, and I think we also need uh, I think we need this constraint here all right um, so I hope everybody is fine with that we maximize this linear quantity subject to this constraint which is hard this and we need that okay so we have now two groups of variables these y's which are a matrix and this x which is uh, our vector now um, this quantity here maybe uh, so the people from smooth optimizer or some of the other people that are in the chat will stop me if I say anything stupid but this is a constraint that specifies or requires y to be rank 1 and uh, positive semi-definite okay uh, and I think requiring this I'm not even sure if there's a class of problem uh, but it's in general hard and this means we can relax this problem in saying so now we're not uh, doing something exact we're relaxing the problem relaxation and the relaxation of this problem is maximizing the sum of ij wij divided by 4 so it's sum over uh, so it's max over y over the y matrix of the sum ij of wij divided by 4 times 1 minus ij okay and uh, subject to we still need this one uh, so the diagonal has to be 1 and instead of this hard constraint here we require y in uh, PSD so this means y has to be a semi-definite positive matrix and uh, that would be it that's our relaxation so we are basically relaxing the rank 1 constraint and I think we if we had a rank 1 constraint here this will be uh, exact if you even if you don't have this I think yes yeah because uh, this can be ignored okay so the relaxation is this one um, so the nice thing is this relaxation is uh, way tighter to the integer solution compared to the linear relaxation which can be arbitrarily bad in that case you have a simple proof that this solution can be that the solution can be arbitrarily bad I'm not going to go into the details here but yeah it's um, it's easy to construct a linear uh, solution to the linear relaxation which um, yeah solution to the linear relaxation which is constant I think with the size of a graph I think all right so uh, now that we have this uh, let's get back to building the, the actual tutorial um, and maybe first thing will be to regenerate my uh, notebook to see if it's gotten better so I first shut down this and I'll close the notebook I 
from there. I just regenerate the script with all the fixes I did. Uh, did I fix everything? I hope so. Did I fix the function? Uh, no, I did not. Okay, let's save that. And I reweave, uh, reweave this file. And so this will reconvert this notebook. So, so otherwise, I hope otherwise, uh, yeah, I hope everyone's having a good s a good Sunday. It's not too rainy here in Scotland. And yeah, temperature is starting to get uh, to get a bit uh, higher, which is nice, definitely. Oh, I think I have, I have a tab that just opened on the side. So do I have a graph plot? No, uh, G plot somewhere. Oh yeah, I don't want G plot HTML, which will open a new, um, which will open a new tab in my browser for me. I want the graph to be uh, I want the graph to be its in its own block yes uh, I think weave is nice because you don't need to commit notebooks anymore you can just uh, commit some scripts like this and it's fairly simple I mean the syntax is just add this special character at the beginning it's a completely valid Julia file so you can run it but otherwise you get uh, something way nicer overall I'm not sure I do, should I have that. Can I shut down? Uh, is this generating still? So yeah, if you want to try Weave, I think it's a fairly nice system. It works well. Um, it's still maintained and it's even pushed forward for uh, new features, I think. And yeah, overall it's great. I'm really satisfied with it. I didn't use it massively before starting to get onto these uh, these notebooks and tutorials, but yeah, it's it's really easy to to step into. All right, so we'll be there. Semi defined formulation. Yeah, so we'll redo all our all the stuff we did on the quadratic problem. I hope is everyone following? Does do some people not have a clue about what's going on with the optimization formulation? I recently learned about it a bit more, so there's no problem saying you don't get you don't get it. Or there's also no problem saying I don't get it because I might have missed something or said something wrong. Cool, so this is uh, regenerated here. And let's open that. Cool. So this is our max cut regenerated. Oh, nice. Look how beautiful it is now. The only thing is, we could separate a bit more of a fall, but I'm not too picky, so this is fine. And the graph didn't generate. Uh, maybe I created an empty block here that we don't need. Uh, hmm. If I execute that. So this needs to relaunch everything. It might be a bit slow. I thought graph plot will just output my graph directly here. Strange that it doesn't do it. Maybe there was a warning somewhere. I don't know. No. Ah no. Okay, it does generate it. I don't know why it didn't do it in the first run. Strange. But anyway, so just above graph plot we have uh, an empty block, which is not too nice. G plot. Yeah, here. That doesn't need um, to print. V. 
following example graph is taken. Let's do full sentences. Okay. Cool. So I I would say the the notebook is in a an acceptable state for now. So we'll move on to the to the nasty stuff, namely so continuing under quadratic formulation. Quadratic. It's ma a mouthful to say. Um, if solution vector is composed of um, uh, minus one one for um, belonging to the set to the subset or not then I'm not sure I should start a sentence with then. Uh, it might not be best English style. Then uh, product x i x j uh, is minus one. is i and j are in different subsets and one otherwise this implies um, one minus this quantity is is um, zero if i and j are in the same subset and um, two otherwise um, If IJ and uh, JI uh, dividing it to divide it by four. Frack here, yes, maybe. So frack of that divided by four times one minus x i x j is zero if i and j are in the same subset, and uh, w i j otherwise. Okay, I didn't get lost. Um, if you want to learn more about quadratic programming, you should definitely check Abel's stream. He did one yesterday evening, but too late for me. I mean, yesterday evening at uh, Brazil's time, and one a bit before in the week. So don't hesitate to check Abel's uh, channel to learn about li nonlinear programming a bit more, like real nonlinear programming, um, and 
yeah, uh, especially quadratic programming this week mostly. So all the specific techniques that people use for the proper nonlinear stuff, as in how do you move along your curve and so on. All right, um, the resulting model. Resulting model is given by. So uh, we don't have the z anymore. We're just optimizing over x. Sum of this frag w i j over four one minus x i x j. Cool. Subject to and then the only constraint we have is xi in minus one one. And I think that's it. Yes, uh, and that's for all i in. Okay, uh, so that's the first model. Um, introducing a matrix variable. Why? Oops, and I need to write this as a text block. Introducing a matrix variable Y, IJ. Equals uh, xij xixj. Sorry. Um, so one thing to note here: it's a quadratic model, but it's absolutely non-convex. Uh, it's just uh, because it, well, it's product of uh, uh, it's bilinear products of non-diagonal terms only. So uh, not great, yeah. So introducing a matrix variable x y x i j y i j sorry equal x i x j um, we can equivalently reformulate the above uh, quadratic oops oopsie quadratic problem as uh, close. So we're now optimizing over x and y, big Y. So here this would be y i j over do we? I think we don't need this anymore. Such that y i j y well i i equal one equals one for i And um, so y equal x exponent t. Nope, x x x exponent t. Okay, I think this is all right. Uh, 
rajouter euh, semi definite matrix of rank 1 rank 1 um, this optimization problem is fully equivalent to the uh, to the initial logic problem uh, and uh, hard to solve we'll not get into complexity details but this is NP hard to solve possible relaxation is to remove the rank 1 rank 1 with a dash like this uh, I don't know if we have some of the smooth optimizer people around I let the rank dash 1 and if it's not the case they'll just shout at me okay so the possible relaxation is to remove the rank 1 uh, yielding the following problem so and the new problem is oh we don't even have x here I think. oh yeah we still have x and here um, so we don't have x, we're just optimizing over y now and well, this the diagonal equal 1 stays and this is replaced by y in uh, how mathcal s n so this would be saying y is semi-definite positive with um, y implying uh, denoting implying uh, the set of semi-definite positive positive semi-definite matrices uh, so one subtlety people talk of PSD matrices so PSD here uh, but when you hear SDP it's usually about semi-definite programming or semi-definite problems so we're talking about the optimization problem where one constraint is that the matrix has to be semi-definite positive or positive semi-definite sorry so I always switch the sense because of that all right um, so one can such model can be represented can be um, created in jump can be implemented in jump and solved using a solve and optimized uh, solved using an optimizer uh, which supports um, semi definite uh, optimization oh, that's ugly let's see, maybe conic optimization instead using an underlying solver which supports yeah still a bit ugly but well I guess we can leave it like that for now all right so let's just create the same using the same graph we'll just uh, um, so we won't use GLPK we need a SDP solver now so it would be SDP max cut uh, using our solver. 
so it will be just Y and we have jump loaded right yes PSD yes we have PSD cone so we can say that a matrix variable is in a PSD cone or we can create a constraint directly with SD constraint Ooh, using the fancy uh, less uh, greater or, or equal um, yeah SD constraint might be a bit prettier I think I don't know that yeah that 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 looks fine we just copy this um, this is a tutorial so I'm completely shameless about now um, this is I don't I think we just create it and say that the variable is in PSD code um, variable model uh, y this will be 1 to n 1 to n uh, maybe this will work like this so if I create a model a model so it's a jump model and then I create that no it doesn't like that. Unknown sense. Okay, it doesn't recognize the character in PSD code. Oh, that works. Okay. So we can create a variable y that's directly constrained to be in the PSD, so positive semi definite code, which is uh, a code not in the geometric sense but in the algebraic sense. So if you are not familiar with it. Uh, so yeah, the positive semi-definite matrices form a cone uh, and it's relatively easy to verify. I'm not gonna do it, but yeah. So now, uh, yeah, what I wanted from a soft, back to a software point of view, I wanted a solver that can tackle such semi-definite problem and we have ECOS for example, why not use RS SCS, the two could be good. Uh, I think I was recommended by some uh, German maintainers to use SCS, so we could use SCS. Uh, SCS dot optimizer, and I think we're using some special parameter for it. So I'm gonna go to scripts and g, and look how they did it. SCS dot yeah, they usually use verbos to zero, but uh, I guess we can we can cope with verbos not zero for now. Yeah, I'll we'll just use that. Oh no, that's mine. Okay, great. Uh, you know what? Let's just leave it verbos for now. We'll just print everything and then remove verbos when we see it's too crazy. So model with this optimizer. So the model is called. Uh, SDP match cut and then the only constraint will be well the only constraint that's not there yet is for i in uh, one one n uh, y of i i is equal to one okay uh, and the objective, let's not forget that because that's the biggest part I think so we m let's uh, get this right sum oops, no, not what I wanted of um, 1 over 4 well, just pull the 1 over 4 out, I think, um, times sum w i j times uh, y times, no, 1 minus y 
by a J. For I in one N for a J, not getting tricked again by the four comprehension with a comma for J in uh, one N. Cool. I think we're good here. So uh, one thing we could do, if you notice, there's a constant term in the um, in the objective. We could remove it. But the nice thing here is that we keep a complete equivalent between our reformulated problem or yeah we keep an equivalent of the objective of what the objective means between the reformulated problem and the initial problem. I didn't want to do that. Okay. So we optimize we optimize it and I think since it's a relaxation the objective will always be greater than six greater or equal to 6, and then we show it. And there, uh, we will get something that might be fractional, and that, that might not be perfect. Okay. Right. Um, did we define the graph here? Yes. What do we... Oh, we didn't import a CS, of course. CS. So this will precompile it. I don't think it's going to be too long, I hope. All right. This looks fine. Creating the model, adding the variable, adding our constraint, which is the, the diagonal constraint. objective. We could also write this constraint in a slightly different way. Oh, the objective is exactly 6. That's interesting. Huh. Uh, okay, the objective is 6, but we still get something that does look fractional. Yeah, it's definitely fractional. Uh, so we need to factorize this matrix into xt x I'm not sure how to do this. The other way, sorry, to write the constraint uh, that we had above, which is uh, this one, will be you can just extract the diagonal of this matrix, and this will be this vector, and you can just set this like that. So add a constraint uh, to the model, which is that the diagonal has to be uh, one everywhere, element-wise, on every point here. Just useful tip. Oh no! Wha why did I keep quit that? Sorry about that. Um, yes. Jump. So in the end we get this. Uh, what I want now is... Oh boy. My linear algebra is rusty. Uh, I want to factorize this into x t x. Um, how do I do that? Take one. So, um, so we do have something, and what I want now is to factorize this matrix into a form uh, x x x transpose. Uh, that's an SVD, is it? Uh, 
so my matrix value was that really equal to okay um uh, svd yes how do i use this full bull false the computer secret value decomposition of hi there hi Compute a singular value decomposition SVD of A and return an SVD object. USVT VT can be obtained from factorization. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, so the matrix is not completely rank 1. If you can say this is 0, this is a rank 2 matrix, which is not too bad. And now I want to get, um, how do I get something that's the closest possible to uh, x such that um, x x transpose minus the y values is as close as possible to zero. I my linear algebra is awfully rusty. I should have known what I was getting into when I was uh, starting a stream on on uh, semi-definite optimization. Ah yes, finally someone helping me in the chat. Yes, so this is um, so the SVD object is this first column of U and VT. Thanks a lot for for the help. Uh, so u times diagonal of s one one zero 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 times it. I'm just checking what the values are. All right. S arch dot u times. Subject is a bit of an ugly one. F equal um, so SVD of linear algebra the SVD of uh, my matrix YVs. And then, um, so when you say the convention is in the algebra, okay, you mean the, the package in the algebra. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, right, so F let you multiply this by diagonal, um, or it's just a matrix of zeros plus uh, so uh, middle net sorry for the name zeros um, so u is a six times six so six six oh like that 
Oh, that's so that's the closest rank one matrix. Okay. All right. By getting by only taking the first singular value. Oh, yo, you mean SVD V? Okay, SVD this. Single value, yes, there's just one, which is the same as the first one. And the others are really closer to zero than what we had before. Okay, cool. Alright. And so it means the f it's the first column of, uh, of U which is here my um, my vector, if I'm not mistaken. One, two, and four. And we said the... I'm gonna reopen to check. One, two, three, one, two, four. Um just want that sorry for that. Oh I didn't close my notebook, it's open somewhere. Yes, yeah. Um just checking the solution that we had before. Oh we didn't regenerate it, did we? Ah yes. One, two, three. Okay, uh, 1, 2, 3 is not, and 4 is, so 1, 2, and 4. And if we check the solution we have here, uh, by randomized rounding, on average we'll get 1, 2, and 4. They're all negative, and the other are positive. So it means on average by randomized rounding, we'll get this 3 on the side, on one side and these three on the other side. So that works. Uh, it's still not that great because, well, this one is fairly small, but the positive ones are really positive. That's a, a very good point. Um, yes, I'm looking at the good one. Yes, I am. Uh, so, yeah, it's you. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this quantity here is what I was doing. so that's the rank one matrix or if I was taking just the SVD so the first SVD it means my um, no the U matrix yes the U matrix was the the one that was interesting and it's uh, the same U the first column is the same as what we computed with the rank one matrix so what we get here is minus zero one min so these three are negative and they're supposed to be in the same cluster so one two and four and these three are well for this one really well positive and they're on the good side so that's it's a victory so we get if we get randomized uh if we randomize the um, a rounding to minus one or plus one we would get on average a good answer here So f dot u first column, all right. Um, so yeah, I you should uh, ping me on the repository when we we'll do a pull request. I'll definitely add you. Um, uh, um, yeah, I answered to that. Yeah, but yeah, ping me on the on the repository on the pull request, and I'll definitely add you as a as a co author for this tutorial because I was I would have dug for way more for finding this. Um, recomputing uh, the vector. Um, So it's, let's say it's, uh, no, uh, dollars y approximate, approximate 
uh, x x transpose uh, we can compute estimate um, um, looks like the u vector is trying to approximate so our solution vector times uh, sqrt 1 over 5 um, it I wonder if one isn't neutral in this I mean if having one on one side or on the other side is not equivalent because if that's the case it would make sense for uh, the value of the first vertex to be indifferent to being one or minus one so we'll check that after by uh, random rounding randomized rounding and I think here uh, to do add paper because there's I mean this has been investigated a long time ago and there's a reference paper for this from the 90s um, yes and I just get f equals vd of y uh, of value of y and um, x hat yeah I'm not sure I like writing it like this but well x hat equals um, um, so f dot u so uh, all the rows, first column, and how do we normalize this? Uh, yeah, I think there's a geometric reason for uh, for this not being. If I reoptimize, oh no, yeah. I wonder if I reoptimize it, how if it. Yeah, I think it will fall to the same solution. It's a convex problem. Um, so x has equal f. Mm -hmm. This is a normalized, and then uh, x hat equal a map of this. X V for value maybe. Um, uh, v smaller or equal to zero. No, greater or equal to zero. Um, this so this is uh, false or true, which is equivalent to zero one times two minus one. So this is resetting everything to minus one one. Uh, but we could also la leave it to times one to get something that's zero or one. Yep, welcome. It was nice to have you. Um, all right, so we have our x hat, and we'll show uh, the common solution of x hat and uh, jump dot value of the x of the linear problem. Um, linear. Zip them together and collect that thing. Collect of zip of x linear and 
x hat. All right. Uh, let's reload everything. And first use the first model, so load the graph. That we don't need. Optimize the linear version of it. Yeah, we don't need to show everything. What time is it? Oh yeah, we've been at it for for some hours now. So that's the linear version of it. And then what the linear integer version of it? And then uh, this one. Yeah, I do import a CS. Yeah, we can remove a constant reference because we're not needing it here. Yeah, plus this is not constant reference, this is actually a variable that's returned. So it's not optimizing it. I think it would be worth it to still have a plot of the um, have a plot of the time taken by the relaxation by the semi-definite one, time taken by the mixed integer linear version, and then the the plot of uh, the accuracy gap. If we have if we have a mistake. Okay. Oh yeah, and bad luck we get. Yeah, the solution are complementary. So when it's one on one, it's zero on the other, and so on. Uh, I'll also maybe round it. Uh, so there's the first one that needs round to int just for printing the same values, well the same style of values. Did I forget the parentheses? Yes, absolutely. No. Int. Oh no. Round int here. That's why. Type no method round integer. Oh, no, yes, I need to broadcast that. So this broadcast, for those who are not familiar with Julia, is a function applied element-wise to a collection, usually to an array. Okay, and we get a good solution in the sense that we get exactly the symmetric thing. So if we get, if we do one minus, again, I apply this minus to the whole x hat, and here we go. Well, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we're going to get... Um, so, uh, one test we could add here is either the... Um, either the, diff the sum of the difference will be zero or it would be the number of vertices. So that would be a good test here. Run minus so sun sum of well we'll sum the absolute function. So yeah, maybe we'll just do a norm uh, linear algebra that norm norm one is norm one exported nope but we'll still use just norm one directly linear algebra dot norm one of this is equal zero or or equals n. No. 
Um, oh, yeah. Still, the, I didn't create the rounding problem here. Uh, nope, not that. Surround so broadcasted with uh, first argument being the type. I want to broadcast around to integer of this vector. And the same thing here round broadcasted integer comma and linear. And that's not needed. Extra token, where is it? At the end of expression. Huh. Here? Ah, right. There was one left over there. Perfect, yes. And that's this one. Wait. Oh, I completely forgot one here. So if I run the two things here. No. Collect. Zip. Ah, same thing with round. I'll never learn. And this one's not needed. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Finally, we're getting somewhere. Uh, the paper for randomized rounding. Do I have it around? I took a look at it a bit earlier. So I should have it somewhere. Germans and Williamson, 1995, or Delorme and Pol Poliak, yes, 93. Uh, Laplace and eigenvalues and the maximum cut problem. Yeah, that's for introducing a bound on the problem. Mm, I think it, it might be the 95. I'm not sure which one to uh, which one to give. The others are. The others seem to be mostly for um, uh, specific graphs. Okay. Um, so, is everyone doing it right? I'm not. Did I confuse someone? Are you laughing for the SVD part? I hope not not too much. Uh, I think we're starting to get good here. Um, I just regenerate everything. Yeah, did I, did I console it? I just weave the file. Jump tutorials, weave... No, not, not all. I want to weave only Weird. Why do I have no? That's in modeling and um, max cut. So again, I'm gonna regenerate my file from the my test file and my notebook. And in the meantime, I can just execute my file, which is a standard GUI file which means I can just include it here, for example. Um, uh, so I'm including my scripts. Script, uh, it will be in modeling uh, max cut. So the, that's the one of the biggest advantages of having a weave system is you can just run your file like that, not bother too much. Um, yeah, and you don't need to um, you don't need to worry about having a file on the side that's synchronized with the rest of, let's say, a notebook or things like this. You really have your your code and the documentation is in sync because it's in the code directly 
and just everything gets generated nicely. Alright, in the meantime, um, yes, yes, oh, I didn't import, oh, of course, I imported it, but in my REPL only, yes, yes, but I didn't import it there. In the script, I mean. So this should work all nicely here. Test passed, okay. So we didn't get any error, that's a good thing, and we have all our tests passing. So I do agree now that I see it, that uh, SCS is a bit verbose. Although it's nice to see the result and understand what's going on, I will uh, set it just like the others, which is optimizer with attributes, optimizer with verbose at zero. Uh, and that's here. Yes, here. Okay. Um, so yeah, with this, if I rerun the script, it will be the same thing with less output. Yes, perfect. Maybe we don't need to show the value y. Yes, that. Yeah, maybe yeah, we can remove this one. Okay, we seem to be good here. Uh, I think I will stop the stream there. Uh, it's been quite long already, uh, two hours and a half. Uh, if you have questions, just don't hesitate in the last minutes in the chat. Uh, if you want to chat about something specifically. Uh, maybe maybe we should add a bit more uh, graphical example, as in show what's happening in the graph. Maybe color the graph at the end. Um, yeah, that could be an idea. Yeah, I think I will I will do that now. Just add a quick function in the graph for. Yeah. Now that I have the idea, I can't get it out of my mind. So um, after. So after we've optimized here, represent the solution. Representing a solution or visualizing a solution. So graph plot um, and we use graph color. I think for this we might need a colorant. Uh, oh no no thank you for all the help on the on the SVD part that was that would have been awful um so i think i'll just pull uh the um, <coughs> documentation from lightgraph uh, namely from graph plot and so what do we have here? I want to have a specific color for my... Uh, yeah, that's nice. I want to have specific colors for my nodes depending on the, the node value. Node field C, okay. That looks like what I'm wanting, what I'm uh, looking for. Uh, so membership is here our so we will need something from color. Did I close the window already? No. Color of a graph. So I think we need using graph plots. Where is this color from? Colors.jl, yes. Um Uh, 
colors and that will be colorant str uh, for those who don't know what this is this is a what's the name again a string macro and this allows you to transform a string into something else or to construct something else from a string so if you do something like this and you construct it with this special thing uh, in front of it this will call the macro s str over your string high so it's really practical to have sometimes just like things like this defi defining uh, colors directly um, so a membership equal so this will be um, round int um, x i plus one for x i in no, the four is after for x i in that would be x linear. Okay. Uh, and this will be node color. Uh, all nodes colors round and this will be node color of this which will be either one or two. And the syntax is not field C something. Um, not field, yeah, not field C. We should really change this keyword. I don't find it that clear, but well, it's not. It's it's a convention. Um, so. Ah uh, yes, I need to, I need to plot HTML. What I mean here. So what does it look like? I hope it works. Yes, it does. Oh, wonderful. That's, so that's exactly what we wanted. Visualizing what's happening um, in the graph directly. Cool. Mm -hmm. Let's get back here. So this works, uh, th which means we we'll move this to the top. And we'll add that um, here. and we add that to uh, that was the x hat and that was um, x hat and it's x i plus one for x i in x hat Okay, so I think that's it. Now we have a notebook well working. Cool. Um, we'll add just one last thing promised. Um, add, so representing the SDP solution. The SDP approximated solution. That would be a title. Okay, yeah. Now we can finish. Uh, thank you all for joining. And yeah, if you have questions, reach out on Twitter, in the chat, or anything else. Uh, yeah, in on the Slack, on Discord, or whatever you want. Or on the repo directly. If you want to contribute, feel free. It's not my repo. It belongs to the Jump organization. But I'm b I've been uh, playing a bit with it in the last week or so. All right. 
see you all and yeah wash your hands